When you think of Hairlin, you might think of its white sandy soils, overgrown with erica or heather flower, and covered with moss here and there. One day, some time in the late 18th century, one of the inhabitants of Hairlin made a patch of the area available for sand excavation. This resident was Matthijs Josef Bojin. His profession? A farmer and a cattle dealer. He had a daughter and six sons. Together with Franz, Mathieu, Peter Josef, Hubert Josef, and Henrik Josef, he dug a quarry. The beautiful white Miocene sand that he would quarry on this patch almost exclusively occurs in the Limburg province. It has a silver sheen due to its glimmer content, hence the name silver sand. It is a pure quartz sand with a very high silica content of 99.75% and a maximum of iron oxide some plus minus 0.011%. When Mr. Bojin started the quarry, everything was extracted by hand and shovel and transported solely by horse and cart. Bojin's silver sand was much desired. In 1916, Philips, the company, was looking for raw material for glass manufacturing. Because of the restrictions on international trade during World War I, the Philips management was forced to build a glass factory and manufacture the glass balloons themselves. The sand came from Herlin. Grandma told me that she heard old Mr. Anton Phillips come to Grandpa and say, you have to dig deeper here. If you do that, you'll end up with white sand. Everything went slowly but splendidly for a while. Unfortunately, the invasion of May 1940 virtually halted exports. There was limited sales, so income was small. However, the demand for good glass sand prevailed. In the 1950s and 60s, Bojin's silver sand was especially in demand for the popular crystal glass products. Every crystal factory in the world wanted his sand. The good quality of Bojin's raw materials resulted in a perfect end product. But people's taste changed around the mid-60s. At first, crystal had been a status symbol. Think of sparkling drinking glasses, delicate ornaments and intricate lamps. The ceilings of houses were much higher then, and a crystal chandelier could easily fit inside. However, architecture changed and the result was that the crystal market disappeared. Sand had to be used for other things. Today, production has increased in output and quality. To maintain the sand quality, all the sand is washed in mechanical washing installations. Mr. Hoos, a worker at the quarry, explained, Chemically speaking, we want to supply the customer with a natural product that is clean. The product was not dirty, but from a chemical point of view, the customer wants a certain composition. Design in and around the quarry has also become relevant. Rehabilitation, says Mr. Hoos. We have to take that into account now. When applying for a permit, we must indicate what we want to leave behind. The province then consults with the municipality and asks, what do we find acceptable with today's knowledge in mind? I always try to make it clear that the duration of the economic profit is longer than the duration of the excavation permit. Every time we apply for a permit, we have to explain what will be left behind. You have to think about the design for later and you have to adapt to the wishes of society. They change over time. 40 years ago, it was said agricultural activity must be possible again. Now it is housing construction. And every time you have to adjust that. You adjust for a period of time, 40 or 50 years from now, with the data you have now. You deduce from the wishes that exist now 
It's a big responsibility to have, and that is why you have to handle the scarce land with care. With this spirit in mind, the still-running quarry hosted an opera in 2018. The opera was Carmina Burana. What does it mean for a quarry to host an opera? 